Heavy tanks. How do we play them? Let's have a look at the general concept once again, because that is really the most important thing. Because once you realize the concepts of things, learning the details becomes very easy. Because if you understand how the concept works, you can spot the details quite easily. First easy tip right off the beginning. Wiggle your heavy tank. Just wiggle it. Unless you're trying to aim at the enemy, then it's obviously counterproductive to your aiming time. But if you're not aiming at an enemy, and someone's aiming at you, just wiggle that tank, especially on a vehicle like a Type 71 that has a cupola on the top, but the rest of the armor is very strong. Wiggling the vehicle will result in a lot of enemies not being able to hit you properly, especially if they're playing on touch, if they're playing on an old phone, their aim's gonna be awful, so wiggle that tank back and forth. Might not be the fastest of tanks, but you can still wiggle damn thing around quite well. Now, the other thing you don't want to do is put a vehicle like this out of place, and out of place, I mean, is where that E100 is, and that is the city. Now, Here's the problem with most Blitz maps. It's how they're designed, right? If the city is in the middle of the map, it would work because you could just control the middle, the city, and the outside, and you have map control. But in most Blitz maps, the city is somewhere on the outside where it's not really that relevant because and you don't have a lot of map control by being in the city. So you want to control the entire map and as, mu as much as the map as possible because from there, you have as much options as possible and you have as much distance as possible because distance is just armor that you can't see. Which doesn't even make sense, but let me explain right there. If an enemy is over there, they will have to travel towards you to attack you efficiently. In that time they take to travel, or if they even have to get up a hill if they're a slow heavy tank, in that time that they have to travel towards you and you're in your position that is favorable, that is controlling the map, they will be taking damage, they will be shot at because they have to travel that distance towards you, right? So especially when you're at a disadvantage, when you're less tanks than the enemy, you want to generate distance between you and the enemy. You don't just want to run into multiple enemy vehicles at the same time, you want to pick your fights wisely. You don't enter a fight that you don't win. Unless you're forced into it, then you try your best to still win, you might lose. But if you can choose, you never enter a fight you can't win. It's just like arguments on the internet. You never enter an argument on the internet unless you have one of two objectives. Either wasting time or you've already won and you're just trying to waste somebody's time by having them be wrong, for example. So that's the same in Blitz, right? If you don't go into a fight uh, with the mentality of, hey, I've already won, I've already beaten you. You're just this, it's just gonna take a couple of seconds. That's a formality you're probably not going to win it in the first place. Because if you're on 100 hit points, the other guy is on 2,000. Just get out of there. Find yourself a more favorable position in a distance away. If you're the guy on full hit points, you still wouldn't want to throw them away. Especially in a situation where it is 3v4. Your teammates are very low HP. Again, stay at a distance. Ready? That, this ice 4 he has to now close the distance and get towards you. Which is a very big advantage right there. Now, there are instances where you really want to get close to the enemy. We'll get to those later. But in most cases, having a good bit of distance between you and the enemy is always helpful. Now, that's why you also shouldn't go city, because there, most of the time, the distances are very small, and you also just have 90-degree angled houses that aren't going to provide you with much avenue for attack, because you're behind a house, the other guy's behind a house, whoever peeks first gets shot. So... Ideally, you want to take the map control. You can play somewhat around the city. Going into it is very often a bad idea. Now, the IS-4 and the Object 752, they're doing this very well here. They're playing from two different sides because you always want all enemies right in front of you because you only have one part of your armor that is actually strong, and that is the front of it. Unless you're the IS-7 and the sides are also pretty strong. But you always want to have all of the enemies in front of you. So if you are the enemy, you want to attack from multiple angles, and that is why the map control is so important, because the more of the map con you control, the more angles you can attack from, especially if you have decent mobility. I mean, the Type 71 very much does fall under that as well. It has decent enough mobility to get around. And now, 2v2. Brigio tried to go city, but he came back, so that's very nice. Well played by the Brigetto there as well. And now we're gonna see how this transpires, because what has to happen here is basically somebody has to close the distance and in this case it seems to be the object that's not a one shot now peeking on a one shot is what people and 
people, includes me, do when they no longer care whether they live or die. Because most of the time, you will die. What the object should have done here, ideally, is just hide in a corner somewhere and essentially send the T95 spotting in a way that the object can cover what the T95 can spot and then maybe win from there. But now the T95 is completely on his own against the Type 71 and the Progetto. Progetto brings the mobility, the Type brings the armor, and there you go. He's trying to get up there, which on its own would be a useful thing to do, but in that case, he's just going to get attacked from two sides. Really? Type 71, open Thartan right here. Very lovely replay. It's going up. The Progetto's attacking from the front, which... Uh, ah, that didn't work out quite well. You don't want to run into an enemy's gun like that. Like, not not even in a as advantageous situation as this, you don't want to just run into an enemy's gun like that. Maybe it's fun to do that, but it doesn't result in wins. It depends. Do you want to have fun? Do dumb things. Do you want to win and have fun? Do dumb things that work, basically. And this didn't work out for the T95, because now he is gone. It's a very nice play there. Essentially, wiggle your tank, get some distance, get the map control. That is the essential thing. And help your mediums if they need help against the enemy mediums. Because getting rid of those is essential for a good result. If there aren't any mediums, yeah, that doesn't really matter. Now, in this case, three mediums, three mediums. No problem there. E100, high alpha damage, low mobility. So it is very scary but it can't get out of positions in that it is in very good. So, you ideally always want to have some cavalry with you that can cover you, that is going to be there to protect you. You don't want to just run into three enemies at the same time. Now, a lot of people think that, oh, look at me, I have a 130 ton tank, I have a lot of armor, I can just run in there. Nope, it doesn't work that way, because even though, yes, you are the brunt of the battle, it still means to play wisely, to look at the bigger picture. What is the tank going to go? Where is that 62A going to go? What are his options? Where is the mouse going to go? Where is the E100 going to go? Don't you see the tanks? Know where they're going to go. Because if you can accurately predict the flow of the battle, you can win a lot more battles easily, right? So try to understand where can the mouse go? Not very far. Where can the 62A go? Eh, pretty far. But you have to treat different types of tanks very differently. The E100 can't really run away from anything. Neither can the mouse. The 62A, however, can just run around. So, just like in a 1vx situation, you want the easiest target first. What is the tank that I can shoot at the easiest, right? And obviously, in the inverse, you don't ever want to be the easiest target for the enemy to shoot at. You want to be the most dangerous tank to the enemy team, but you never want to be the easiest target for them. But if you're on the other side, Take out the easiest target first. In this case, shooting the E100, not really that nice. Shooting the other guy, he's th right there, broadside. Shoot him, easiest target. Once you get rid of the easy ones, then you have to take out the dangerous ones. Because if you don't take out the dangerous ones, well, then you lose. Now, having your teammates give up their hit points like the I7 is always nice, right? Because hit hitting shots would also be nice. Because if you have a teammate that is that willing to throw away their hit points for your own gain and it is very important to capitalize off that to see that that oh there's a teammate that is in trouble so you're gonna help that teammate by shooting at the enemies that are shooting at the teammate you don't want you don't want to just rush in there and like protect their hit points and you, you can do that if they're a one shot and if they're crucial to survival but in most cases you want to be like all right the enemy tanks are focused on the i7 how much pain can I cause to these enemies that hopefully the I-7 lives, but that ideally both the E-100 and the mouse are going to be significantly less effective. Now, it is still a 4 versus 3 here, so the advantage is on the side. Now, you want to take out the E-100 here, right? Take out the guns. The TVP very well does that. So now the mouse is the only one left. And now... <sighs> mouse armor, huh? Mouse armor now. 4 versus 3. 3 versus 2. Now the Yeguru is going to die to the TVP. The TVP is still full HP. He did pretty well for himself. He's darting around, doing a lot of damage, keeping his hit points till the end of the battle because the more hit points you have at the end of the battle, the more effective you can be. The most damage you can do is at the start of the battle when everything's chaos and unorganized 
And at the end of the battle, when everything is chaos and unorganized in the mid battle, you want to be careful, you want to be thoughtful, you want to plan your approach of what you're going to do. But now, we go back to the easiest target. The easiest target is the mouse. I mean, the most dangerous is the TVP because the TVP can clip the E100, whereas the mouse can't one-shot the E100. But the mouse is blocking the TVP, essentially. So you have to take out the mouse. You can take out the mouse because it's a very easy target. And now it is down to one TVP. If you're in a heavy tech, this is a very big problem. If the TVP on the allied team wouldn't be there. Because obviously, that TVP can now control the map. It can control the engagement. It can go wherever he wants to and attack from any angle. Whereas the E100 is a lot less helpful there because you can't play as many options because the tvp is going to roughly know where you are anyway because it's slow but the tvp just decides to not use the map to his advantage and just drive into the 100 shot so yeah that's great but that's that's cases where you don't want to close the distance either because if you have a tvp that's like two meters next to you that guy is just going to circle you so again it might sound counterintuitive, but in that case, you want the TVP a little further away. Not too far away so you don't know where he is, but far enough away that he can't directly attack and circle you. But now we get to the Jack of All Trades, Master of None, but better than Master of One, the T110A5. It can essentially play any role, which is why it is such a great vehicle, because in whatever position you put it in, as long as you're semi-competent, you're going to have some advantage that you can play out, and that's what you really want to do in most engagements. You don't want to fight multiple tanks at the same time. You always want to fight one tank at one time. In that case, use the advantage that your vehicle has. For example, the E5 has great turret armor, has 8 degrees of gun depression, has relatively high DPM for a heavy tank of this type. So that is going to be your advantage there. And it also has good heat penetration against something like a VK-90. The VK-90's advantage, for example, would be that it is excellent at side scraping. So the VK should be setting up a side scrape somewhere. The VK should use his alpha damage that is slightly higher than the E5 to try to trade. But in the position that he's in, he can't really play that out all that well because he's just standing there shooting at the hill when he knows that the E5 is right there. So that is, again, lack of situational awareness, which is very big in Blitz. Again, look at the bigger picture. You'd want to know where everybody is at all times and you want to know where everybody can be at all times that's the the ultimate try hard method right here but most of the time i don't really use it though because the game's about having fun so quick pause here are you having fun because if you're not having fun playing better doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have more fun because essentially you get sort of diminished returns like, if you have 60% win rate, having 70% win rate is probably not going to make it more fun. It's probably just going to make it more try hard. So, remember to have fun. Because that's the most important thing. But, the more aware you are, the better you'll be. But the more depression-inducing the game will become. Because you can just see the obvious mistakes that everybody, including yourself, are making all the time. Now, on the E5 here, you can use that rock as a cover for crossfire from the VK. The Yeager down there. He's in a lower position. That's that's why you want map control. That's why you want the high ground because of situations like this. Now again, wiggle back and forth, make it as hard as possible to get shot at. And the Yeager is just basically giving up now, which is exactly what you want here. And again, use the rock as a cover for the VK. Perfect situational awareness here. This is being played really well, and I love replays like this because I can explain what's happening without having to play the game myself, so I can make a video, which is what I enjoy, without having to play the game, which is what I don't enjoy anymore, because I've already done everything. So, this is very nice, and if you want to send me your own replays, put them on my Discord server, and maybe I'll talk some trash over them as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Or don't, I don't know. But here, you can see the E100 and the Yeguru, they're pushing forward. So, would it make sense to go and back and defend? No. What would make sense here is isolate the Yor. Yor, 900 damage in the clip, Pretty dangerous right here. The Yeguru and the E100, they're gonna go over there, they're gonna do their own thing. So what you want to do is again, isolate a tank 1v1v1. You don't want to fight multiple tanks at the same time. Here, yeah, yeah, this is a bit of an overpeak and an overstretch here. Again, because even though, yes, the VK was the easiest target to shoot at, the E4 was too dangerous to peak. So got shot there for shooting at the VK. Now, that E4 is going to be a little bit of a problem because he's essentially in the perfect crossfire position. Now, 
There is still four vehicles again, but that does not yet mean that it is one. Because there's a Yegaru on the other side. Now you want to stay behind that rock now. You don't want to pull back. Yeah, you don't want to pull back that far. Because you're going to get shot by the E4 regardless. But the Yegaru, he might think again. He might change his opinion. Now it's important. Exactly. Track the E4. And this is where you want to close the distance, right? Most, most of the time, you want to have distance between you and the enemy. But if you're at a range where the enemy can't fight you... That's where you want to close the distance. For example, with a vehicle like an E4 that can't traverse the turret around, you want to get behind it very closely. Something like an E100. You would, if you're in an E5 or again a Type 71, you would want to get very close to it and then angle and drive right next to him. And there's there's the front armor. And yeah, you want to like, drive up to him and angle so that the E100 is a very tall vehicle, so it can't fire down. You're just going to sit there, angle back and forth all the time. So that is when you want to be close. When being close is an advantage, a direct advantage. If you're like in a Object 140 and you drive up to the side of an E100 and you're just driving back and forth on his side, he can't do anything about that. Obviously, only if it's in a 1v1, right? If there are other vehicles around on the enemy team that could shoot you, you don't want to do that, right? You always want to engage one vehicle at a time you never want to open up to being shot from two tanks or even worse two directions at the same time right 1v1 all the time you fight one guy you use your tank's advantages that you hopefully know by looking at the statistics of their tank your tank rough estimates are enough right you don't need to know your exact reload or your exact alpha damage numbers even you just have to know i can i can pen that or i can't pen that for example or I can go there in, in that time, for example. You don't need to know the exact numbers, but you gotta know what is important. So, here, again, get close. The E100 stock, you wanna get up close, you use your good heat rounds on the E5, again, drive back and forth, just like I said, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle that thing. And there is nothing that E100 can do about it. And that's how you play heavy tanks. Wiggle, stick to 1v1s, get distance if you need. Don't go into the city unless... You absolutely need to help your mediums beat the enemy mediums and then those things combined with map and tank knowledge that's all you need to play heavy tanks at a high level but remember to have fun